Hi, my name is Quinton, and I want to make this. This is a machine that manipulates dough and frosting blocks to construct a pastry. It is also an example of the machines that players will design in the Minecraft mod pack I am developing. I've always loved the process of problem solving, so I'm creating this game to challenge players to use pistons and redstone to hopefully spread the thrill of solving puzzles. Now that you are all caught up with the goal, it's time to start development. So here's what I know. The primary gameplay loop, or what players will spend most of their time doing, is building these machines. But why are players doing this? Essentially, what are the secondary and tertiary gameplay loops which motivate the player to engage with the primary loop? A common implementation in puzzle games is solve the puzzle as primary loop, unlock more levels in story as secondary, and complete the story as tertiary. This would work pretty well for my pack. I just need to come up with a good story. A good story would keep development easy and give me lots of room to add any type of puzzle I want. Eventually, I came up with one. Imagine that the player is a bug. Now this bug gets trapped in a sack. A person finds this sack and realizes that they can make the bug automate various tasks for them. They do this by punching holes in the sack for inputs and outputs of the machines that the player creates. This story checks both requirements. It keeps development easy by keeping interaction limited to the holes in one-way dialogues in the chat. It also has tons of flexibility. Effectively, any activity in the real world could work as a task in the game. Now that planning is complete, it's time to start development. Before I make puzzles, I need to make these key features, aka infrastructure. Input and output, i.e. holes. Dialogue for the story in the chat and user experience, things like recipes, movement, tutorials, but these things can be worked on as levels are developed. And dialogue sounds boring, so let's develop the holes. For inspiration, let's look at other games like Infinifactory, Opus Magnum, and Warp Factory. I realized I could use a bedrock cube. All right. Time to start programming. I decided to start with the most important part first, building and verifying structures. I can use code to take a block or coordinate in the world and set it to what I want. Using an offset, I can change which block is considered and place the dirt in a different location. By using enough of these, I can build an entire structure. However, this process can be tedious to write. So to make my life easier, I can use a function that uses letters to specify the entire structure. Now with only this code, I can build a structure. But I must first write this function to set the blocks when constructing this structure. The first step is to iterate through this input, which can be accessed with the variable pattern. I can use the for each method to loop through pattern. And now this code will execute for every layer and I am now provided with the variable layer to access it. I can use another for each on this to go through every row. One more, and now the code is run for every block in the structure. The pattern contains spaces, and I want those to be ignored. So I can use an if statement to check if car is not equal to space. Now this code will run for every block that is not a space. Finally, I can use the code from earlier to set the block. To get the name, I can compare the variables key and car. And to get the offset values, I can use variables to keep track of them for each axis. Each time the loop iterates, the respective variable will count up. Let's see this in action. You get the picture. Let's see this in game. That looks pretty good. Time to move on to the next step. Wait, what if I want to make it place in different orientations? Unluckily for me, 3D rotations are a lot more complicated than they seem. But after some thinking, I realized that I needed to use 3x3 three three matrix multiplication. Think of it like this. There are nine numbers that define the matrix. To start the process, a coordinate goes in. Each value is separated into three parts. These numbers get multiplied by the related number beneath them. 
Then the rows get added up to produce a final result. Finally, all that is left is the output coordinate. This is used in the code by altering which block the set method is called on. So the code changes to this. And the new matrix block offset function simply does the addition and multiplication described earlier. Put simply, instead of placing the block here, it is placed here. Enough talk. Let's see this in action. Here it is without the matrix transformation, and this is it with it. Whoa, that looks pretty funky, doesn't it? First, let's use a more standardized shape, like this. This clearly shows us that red means the x-axis, green means the y-axis, and blue means the z-axis. And the rest of the cube is filled in a similar way. What does this look like with the matrix transformation? Now that is interesting. And you can even see how the x, y, and z axes have been changed. Let's do a simpler experiment. Let's use the identity matrix. This matrix is special in that when you multiply something by it, it gives you what you put in. You can see these two cubes are identical. Let's do a similar experiment. Let's change the matrix to this. You can see that the x and y are switched, but the z doesn't change. Effectively, every step in the X is now a step in the Y. Similarly, every step in the Y is now a step in the X. And every step in the Z is still a step in the Z. Now let's use this to figure out how to do rotations. Let's say that we want to rotate like this. For every step in the X for the input, we want a step in the negative Y for the output. And for every step in the Y for the input, we want a positive step in the X for the output. And a step in the Z for input is a step in the Z for output. So let's see this new matrix in action. Hmm. Yeah, that looks exactly like what we want. Using this method, I found a matrix for all the six directions. And verifying the structure is practically the same as building it. The only difference is now I'm checking the block instead of setting it. Wow, would you look at that? We're done with the holes. That means it's time to work on ending this video. Subscribe so you can know when I make another devlog. With that said, see you next time.